my golden child sister falsely claimed I abused and sought her, and my entitled family disowned me and ruined my life. Now after ten years, they have reached out and want me to reconcile, because my sister came clean and wants a happy family. I took my revenge, secret voices. Hey guys, I'm not going to lie and say this story is real, but Op had me until the third update, but the final update just blew my mind. Just listen in 22 by Chris, then 18M now 30M had finished high school and got accepted to a top engineering college. I was really looking forward to this chapter of my life. Home life had been fine, but I never felt overly cared for my parents weren't neglectful. But I was always second to my golden child younger sister. It was clear from a young age that I was gifted academically. But instead of this getting me praise, it got me only expectations. Mistakes for me were not acceptable and my consequences would be heavy. I still remember getting my car taken for a month when I was 16 because I forgot to lock the front door one day. When I left, my successes were expected, not celebrated, and while some words of pride might be shared, my triumphs were never a big deal. In contrast, my little sister, Alicia, 14F, then had been praised and treated like a princess from birth. She could do no wrong. There was always a reason for her bad behavior. She may be corrected, but the consequences would be slight or only involve verbal scolding. She was nowhere the student I was. She wasn't dumb, she was just average. However, physically she was very gifted. By the time she was in middle school, she was a USAG level 8 gymnast, so by no means a future Olympian, but still very talented. I still remember events like my birthdays being overtaken by my parents, wanting her to show off her skills and her getting gifts, or a say in where we ate. I remember being so happy when she quit gymnastics after 7th grade 1. So I would get to stop hearing about it, but also, so I wasn't expected to go to her endlessly long competitions. Fast forward to the end of my freshman year and I was back home. It was our annual family memorial weekend. BBQ, extended family, family friends, dads, co-workers, it was a big deal. I had an amazing freshman year. I was on Dean's list. Both semesters had joined the school's shooting club and was quite the natural at it. Made a great group of friends and found myself a girlfriend, Nicole, that I'd been seeing for eight months. I'm not sure if my parents even once said anything about me. The talk of the day had been how my sister was all stayed in the pole vault as a HS freshman. I can remember only two people even asking me how college was going. But then again, why would they care? I mean, my ability to basically build an engine from scratch is far less practical and impressive than my sister's ability to catapult herself with a stick. Joking aside, I was honestly used to this. Things didn't go south for me until the following Thanksgiving. I was still riding high and was very successful. I had been selected to do an international internship in the UK for the following summer. Most of the cost would be covered by scholarships, but a small amount still remained. My father, much to my surprise, praised me and offered to cover all my other expenses. I was extremely grateful this coincided with my sister, finally doing something that had even our parents ashamed of her. She had gotten caught performing an inappropriate act on a classmate during lunch in the school parking lot on top of that. When caught, admins decided to search her backpack and found pot. She was suspended from school for 10 days, and my parents had taken away her car for a month. I found this ironic, as it implied that leaving the door unlocked was on par with doing drugs public indecency and lewd conduct on school grounds. But I just kept that to myself since I was happy enough to be hash one for any amount of time or reason at dinner with my grandparents and my aunt's family. I was the talk of the family. There was almost no talk of my sister and her grand sports but there were lots of disappointed looks that she had never had to bear before I returned to school that Sunday night and showed up at my girlfriend's apartment. This was the last night of normalcy I would have the rest of my life the next day. After getting back from class to my dorm room, I had found I had an email from my father, Ed Reed. Christopher, your sister has informed us of your heinous acts against her. I do not know where I and your mother went wrong, or how you could do such despicable things to your own sister, while it does explain her recent misgivings. I am heartbroken to know that you are the cause you have destroyed our family. I have already informed my immediate family, do not reach out to them. The only reason we are not proceeding with legal action is for your sister's sake, 
as I will not force her to face you. You have done enough to harm her already from this day forth. You are no longer my son. I will be legally disowning you. Do not ever contact us again. Panicked and confused, I immediately began to call the house. Then my father, sell no answers. I did this with several other immediate family members and got no answer there as well. Finally, after calling, what must have been 100 times, I tried calling Alicia's cell phone, it was this time it was answered, and it was my father on the other end. I could hear hysterical crying in the background. I began begging for someone to tell me what was going on. But my father interjected and told me not to play innocent or dumb. The only reason he answered was because he couldn't believe I would stoop low enough to call Alicia directly. He told me I was not welcome, that I was a monster, and asked me how I could abuse and assault her like that. I tried to reason with him to plead my case, but he would not listen. He finally told me if I ever called again, came by again, or contacted them by any means, he would go to the authorities. This was my last chance to be a decent person and get out of their lives. If I ever so much has sent a letter, he would make it his mission that I ended up on the U.S. ex-offender registry for the rest of my life devastated and defeated. I went to Nicole for support. I told her everything that happened. She seemed uneasy, but tried to support me. I could tell something was off, and she asked me to head back to my dorm for the night. I was heartbroken to be sent away, but rationalized my concerns away. When I got to my dorm, my roommate Jack was there and being his usual self. Jack had been my best friend since day one of my college freshman year. That was until I told him what happened. He too grew uneasy afterwards, but attempted more support than Nicole had. It wasn't until the next day that the two would start to distance themselves from me over the course of the next week. Nicole broke up with me in a public place with her brother and cousin on standby. I guess I should be grateful she didn't just ghost me. Jack requested and was given an emergency placement in a new dorm room. They both rationalized that there was no way my family would just cut me off without it being justified. They had assumed my guilt as well. In the course of a week, I had lost everyone that was important to me. I was 20 years old and had no one, and no idea what I was supposed to do next. It's been a bit over 10 years since then, and every day has been impossibly hard being cast aside and shunned by everyone close to you. Changes you in ways you would never imagine. I was moving through life as best I could until a day ago when I received an actual letter in the mail. It was several pages long and was from my mother and father. The letter was an apology and plead to reconcile it. Seems that after ten years, my sister finally confessed that she had lied about everything I spent years hoping for this chance. But now that it's here, I don't know if it's worth it. The pain, the loss, can it ever truly be reconciled? I don't know what is best. Do I accept this chance to get the closure I've always dreamed of? Or do I just keep all of it a ghost of my past and move on? Update as stated in my last post, I received a letter from my parents. It had stated that my sister had confessed that the abuse allegations were false. My parents were seeking forgiveness and reconciliation. In addition, they had left phone and email contact information. I sat on this for a few days when a second letter arrived. This one was from my sister. It actually came as two separate letters inside the same envelope. One part was about her life since my banishment. The other was her confession to me. The confession part. It was actually her husband who convinced her to come clean couldn't do it herself. Huh, that she wishes she had never done this and she let it get way out of hand. Initially, she was just angry and upset about the scorn she was receiving and being looked down upon by the family. She needed a good reason why she would be behaving promiscuously and doing drugs. She remembered learning that these were common behaviors amongst abuse victims. So she made up a story that I had forced myself on her. Over the past summer, this is why she started with these behaviors. My parents always eager to explain. A way her bad behaviors took at hook, line, and sinker. In reality, she wasn't doing any of these things any more or less than a typical teenager. My parents always just put her on such a pedestal that the thought of her in this way was incomprehensible to them. She didn't expect my father's reaction to be so extreme. She liked being back at the center of attention but was also scared even more now to say anything she knew it would be worse. 
With a way I was completely discarded and threatened. Initially, my parents were going to go to the authorities. It was her own quick thinking for fear of being found out, but she begged not to, on the grounds she couldn't stand to face me in court once I was gone, and it became apparent I wasn't coming back. She told herself she would take this to the grave, that it was her guilt to bear the effing mental gymnastics on this one. It wasn't until she was married three years ago that she even considered telling the truth. All because of her husband, he had learned she was abused by me from a relative. When he approached the subject, she really downplayed it over time. He grew suspicious as she showed no typical signs of an essay survivor he had to press. But eventually, she told him the truth. He has been pushing her to come clean since he is too good for my family and does not deserve a fate with them. Now that she has a daughter six months old and has provided our parents with their first grandchild, she knows she will never face consequences like I have. She feels finally ready to rid her conscience of this burden and seek forgiveness once again. It's all about Alicia. She concluded this letter by pleading with me to not share this full confession with our parents. Her husband made her send me this as she had only given them the watered-down version of a naive girl too scared to right her wrongs, that she was also pushing hard for me to be invited to Christmas in a few weeks where we could all start to be a family again. WTF, as painful as that was. Dure, the life update was actually worse. My sister went on to talk about how her high school days were great, how she managed to get a track scholarship to the University of Iowa. She met her husband, and they have a big house, a newborn daughter, and so on. She has been living the dream these last ten years. Meanwhile, I lost my family, my girlfriend, and my best friend. My grades tanked as I drank myself to sleep that first semester on my own. I was unable to go on the internship, and my spot in the UK went to someone else I was so low, I just wanted to die. I sat on the edge of the bridge for four hours one night, unable to take that last step. I decided that night, since I couldn't kill myself, I would have to get myself killed. I left school in the weeks that followed and joined the U.S. Marine Corps. The Iraq and Afghan wars were in full swing. I excelled in training and got the placement I wanted. I was EOD. There was no worse danger over there than IEDs. I figured this would kill me for sure. Eight years later, I was discharged in one piece over that time. I had very few relationships or friendships. When you've been abandoned by everyone, you learn to not trust people with who you are. I would go on dates, we would have two, three, four good ones. Then she would not respond to a text, and suddenly I would panic and end things. I'd imagine her just leaving me one day out of nowhere, and I couldn't let that happen again. I had no friends over in Iraq. I would trust my fellow Marines with my life, but not with my soul. I always kept everyone at arm's length. There was only one guy, Val, 27 million, however, who broke through, and he remains my only friend to this day. I actually moved to West Virginia just to be near him and his wife. She met her husband, and they have a big house, a newborn daughter, and so on. She has been living the dream these last 10 years. Meanwhile, I lost my family, my girlfriend, and my best friend, my grades tanked. As I drank myself to sleep that first semester on my own, I was unable to go on the internship, and my spot in the UK went to someone else. I was so low, I just wanted to die. I sat on the edge of the bridge for four hours one night, unable to take that last step. I decided that night, since I couldn't kill myself, I would have to get myself killed. I left school in the weeks that followed and joined the US Marine Corps. The Iraq and Afghan wars were in full swing. I excelled in training and got the placement I wanted. I was EOD. There was no worse danger over there than IEDs. I figured this would kill me for sure. Eight years later, I was discharged in one piece over that time. I had very few relationships or friendships when you've been abandoned by everyone. You learn to not trust people with who you are. I would go on dates. We would have two, three, four good ones. Then she would not respond to a text, and suddenly I would panic and end things. I'd imagine her just leaving me one day out of nowhere, and I couldn't let that happen again. I had no friends over in Iraq. I would trust my fellow Marines with my life, but not with my soul. I always kept everyone at arm's length. There was only one guy, Val, 27 million, however, who broke through, and he remains my only friend to this day. I actually moved to West Virginia just to be near him and his wife. I know this is illegal, but it's what they want for their family, and I'll respect it. Update. The funeral was a somber and painful experience. 
but it has provided a moment of clarity for me. I need to do this, if not for myself. Then for Val and Kim, I'm going to accept my family's offer. Update 2. I'm two days away from leaving for Iowa. I have booked myself a decent hotel. I decided not to go. The cheap route, I also rented a car. Mine is too old for this trip. I'll arrive on December 23rd and get situated, then. The next night, I will be meeting my family at my parents' new home. They moved from Illinois at the end of Alicia's sophomore year, probably. So it would be 2000, and so it would be 2000 and harder for me to find them. I requested that they allow me to follow them on social media, and they happily accept it. I've been going through 10 years of events. I missed seeing how they've aged, getting familiar with the house I'll be entering and what they've been doing. I've spent at least part of every day since the passing with Val and Kim. They are strong people despite their pain. They've done everything they can to help me prepare for this trip. I guess this is what a real family does. They support each other, they sacrifice for each other. I know I couldn't face this and get the closure I've desired without them. I'll be sure to update everyone who has shown me so much support as soon as I can. It might take a little while. It's sure to be a challenging and emotional path. But I think I'm ready for it, update. It has been so long. But for all of you who have been waiting here is my update. I'm sure some of you know some of the story. But I always said if you really want to know, you'd have to read about it on Reddit. Like everyone else, I arrived at my parents' home 30 minutes later than they told me to. I wanted to be the last one there that way. I could get all the hellos and everything out of the way at once and didn't have to do it over and over as people arrived. Christmas Eve wasn't a large affair. My two grandmas, my one grandpa, my aunt and uncle, their son, his wife, my parents, and of course my sister Alicia, her husband, a poor guy, and their daughter Ivy. The only people who hadn't cut me off were Billy and Ivy. They all wanted to hug me, and I allowed it just because I didn't want to make things any more awkward. I had the few presents I decided to bring in, though they were a bit heavy, but I didn't let on. They all said I didn't need to do that, but it was all part of it for me. If I was going to do this, I was going to make the best effort possible. I placed the two big ones under the tree and positioned them front and center for everyone to see and know who brought them. I made small talk with everyone, got the tour of the house. I had some smaller presents. I dropped in a couple of rooms without anyone noticing after about 45 minutes there. They announced presents would be soon. I took this moment to ask my sister for a few moments to talk in private. She agreed. I think she was expecting it. She asked if her carrying the baby still counted as privacy, and I said, of course we stepped outside. It was a cold night. But not bitterly, the fresh air was actually quite nice. She began to apologize for everything before I could even say a word and thank me for not revealing the real truth. I asked her to hold that thought and said I had something for her in my car. She smiled and said sure. After a moment, I returned with a small remote and handed it to her. She looked at me with a confused smile and asked, What's this? I said push it. You'll see the deployment system was three-step once activated by the remote. The present would burst open, revealing the sprayers I hand them attached to rotating cylinders. This covered the large area of the living room. With the accelerants, it truly was a testament to my engineering prowess that I never got the opportunity to really make use of the third phase lit and launched the attached flares igniting the accelerants everyone had been gathered in the living room directly in front of the tree. It could not have been more perfectly timed. The smaller packages in the other rooms didn't even end up being necessary. The placement of the big two was so perfect, I only used them because I had discerned from the social media posts that those two spots provided the best escape routes should anyone survive. The living room unscathed the light from the large window that looked into the living room was blinding. The look on my sister's face was one of true terror, but only for a second as I slid my 9mm. From under my jacket and put one in her left kneecap, I then put a few rounds through the window to make sure the flames had plenty of air to spread. The house went up so fast, I looked down at Alicia. Death grip on Ivy. Sheer horror in her eyes. I figured I couldn't fight the baby out of her hands easily and quickly, so I just put another round in her shoulder to loosen the grip. Once I had Ivy in hand, I held her out to her crying mother. I looked down at Alicia and said, Take a good look. This is all because of you. If you had never lied, this would never have happened. 
If you hadn't confessed, this would never have happened. If you hadn't insisted on me getting invited tonight, this would have never happened. Take a good look at Ivy, because this is the last time you will ever see her. You will never find her. My new time was of the essence. I could finally hear the sirens over the sound of the screams coming from inside. I went to my car. I had a box positioned in the front seat for Ivy. I know it wasn't safe, but we weren't going far. I drove calm and safe to the meeting point. It was six minutes away when I arrived at that abandoned lot behind the old warehouse. We had scoped out Val, and Kim were already there. I let them know the whole mission was a success. I handed over little Michelle to Kim. She kissed my cheek, and I embraced Val. One last time he called me brother. I returned to my car, and made the six-minute trip back to the house I could see paramedics tending to Alicia. She was completely hysterical. I parked two blocks away. I removed all my clothes except my compression shorts, placed my hands behind my head, and walked towards the officers at the scene. The rest is history. I'm serving a life sentence with no parole option. I still feel bad about Billy. He was a good man, married to the wrong person, this past December. After the agreed-upon ten years of no contact, I received the letter from Val, like we talked. He used a series of acquaintances to remail the letter, so it had no traceability in his handwriting. It just said, All is well, they never found her, they never found them. They got to be the family I had always wanted. I'm so happy for Val Kim, and especially Michelle. I'm sorry. It took another six months after the initial ten-year wait. To all those who followed my story, I told the detectives then, and for all these years after, if they wanted to know what really happened that night, they'd have to read about it on Reddit. Like everyone else. They didn't believe me. But when Netflix walked in here offering money to interview me suddenly, it was worth putting a phone in my hand and letting me post it. I was so excited when my login still worked. Lastly, thank you to all the people who followed me, supported me, and gave advice. I like to think this documentary is for you. It's going to be a four-part limited series. I know shows have covered me in the past, but this will be the first I've talked to, and has offered me any updates on Alicia. The producers told me she is still out there, never remarried, never moved on endlessly, searching for the girl she will never find. Knowing she now knows how I feel makes me a million times lighter, like all the weight of the world has been taken off my shoulders. It's closure final and absolute closure. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.